Welcome back to the new Professional StarCraft 2. Once again, we have two of the best players in Europe battling it out. Best of three, TVZ. Let me introduce the fastest player in StarCraft 2. It is Rainer, averaging somewhere around 600 actions per minute. Uh, we hope he has his wrists insured to ensure his chances of winning another world championship. Up against the largest turn last week... He struggled against the Italian Stallion, but we'll see if he can bring himself and his huge inertia around in round two. It's Big Gabe, a.k.a. Hero Marine. Now, I think when they last faced, Hero Marine overall actually was better prepared, especially working with the new patch. Um, and... and I, I think by now everyone's got the gist of it. If any specific changes come up, whether it's the Liberator cost reduction, uh, ca casually mentioning Creep Spreader Ghost, don't worry, the Terrans will remind you how they got nerfed. But uh, he's actually been working with the changes even in these high-level tournaments. Now, some might argue for Zerg, essentially you just do the same thing but better. And I don't necessarily disagree with that statement. Uh, at all. Oh. Now, you don't want to get your first creep tumor snipe because the cooldown is that much longer now. And the vision slightly less. Not a huge impact, but losing that first tumor, uh, a bit of a mistake there from Rainer. He doesn't want to make small mistakes like that. It's very easy to make small mistakes, like not liking and subscribing. But don't worry, anyone can fix that easily. So starport on the way, third command center for Hero Marine. And reactor Hellion. So we're off to a macro start. Okay. Uh, neither of these two. I don't think of either as a, a cheesy player. They'll break it out. I think Rainer is is the best at mixing it in. Because you, you just don't expect it from him. And that's why it's so effective. Like the, the last week games were decided not so much by huge decisions, but by a dozen Zerglings getting at the wrong time. So... If you can avoid that, and if you're a Marine, if Big Gabe can, can lock down his build, I would love to see what a longer game looks like. But Rainer, not, not necessarily going to let that happen. Now, another thing I would love, and I think many people would love, statistically, many of you do love mech. Uh, mech is a unit composition that it's always been a little brittle in the past, where... It's, it's hard to get to a point where you can flex the power of it. Where, because building factories takes gas. It just takes that extra production. And it's a lot harder to get to a stable position um, where the Zerg doesn't already have the rest of the map, right? Like, yes, you can defend your bases, but can you ever attack against someone like, like Raynor? Eh. But... With some adjustments, and, and lately we've been seeing some players try. I feel like every time anything changes, Terran players are like, I should be able to play two equally viable unit compositions on the same race on pretty much any map. And I don't understand why you guys are complaining. Like, you're sitting there building queens. You know what? Terran should be arguing for Zergs to have a new equally viable unit composition. I'm sure, I'm sure this argument will resonate. Terran should say buff Zerg units so queens aren't don't need to be as good. Yes, right, Terrans? I think that that's that's really the direction we're going with this. Viking that racks up two overlord kills still. Uh intact as well. The queen's kinda getting pulled away. Uh just the rush distance between the players and this center kind of courtyard area. I do love the look of the map. Uh overall. But th this low ground courtyard has been the focal point of many games thus far. Oh, Kneebreaker build. Hellbats on the way. The Queen's looking to hold the line. Is there a Baneling Nest? There is not. Those Hellbats, their cone of fire, quite literally. Facing the Queen's right now, trying to get the Zerglings behind. Hero Marine. Uh, Medivac is helping, but that Queen count is too damn high, and the Monarchy is starting to chip through. The knitting needles are working their way, but at the same time, well, the queens are, are running out of energy. The zerglings are evaporating the moment the hellbats look their way, but I think just barely. 
Hero Marine will not break through. Our queens hold Zerglings around. But, 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 he's got a third base. He's actually got a worker lead right now. The, the key part of all that was how much he prevented drone production. And it's not like the Zerglings can really come across and do damage. There's still some more Hellbats. If there weren't these two Hellbats, that would have been a huge mistake. But right now, Hero Marine has been able to turn the tables on the economy. Rainer just now taking uh, his, his fourth hatchery. I think that was a good holding tactic from Hero Marine there. Hellbat timings as an end game, like a game ending goal. I, uh, not a fan. Not, not. I always think they're quite silly. But in this specific case, Hero Marine has pinned Rainer back, limited his economy, and that will allow his third base to be safely established, and he's going to get into this mid-game, I think, in a good position. Now, one drawback. Two drawbacks. Two one drawbacks. One one. Okay, stop. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I thought we'll edit that out. Rainer has 1-1. One, one. He's already started 2-2. Two, two. Hero Marine, you see where I was going? It was coming together, but, like... The numbers don't lie! And they it's a 1-1 one, one upgrade drawback. As Hero Marine delayed his engineering base to do that whole push, Rainer did not delay his upgrades at all. He sprinted towards them. He's going to have a minute upgrade advantage. Zerglings... He, where's the Banelings? Zerglings just running through hell. That's not the ideal choice. Widow Mines... Dropped onto the base. No longer automatically hit eggs. But there's a queen and an overlord. They're tanking some fire. Speaking of fire, the Hellbats again. Zergling's coming in, but the Hellbats helping out a lot. No combat shield, though. And no upgrades. Means those marines are going to be forced to pick up and get out. Helm. Oh. Sorry. Uh, we don't mind coming in again. Uh, of course, they were still on cooldown. So a bit optimistic from Hero Marine. He does have an armory, so detection is required. Ainling speed about to complete. Rainer is now at 87 drones. Ah! Okay, well, he gets out. But all this distracting Rainer from the push at the front. One widow mine goes down, but the Marines are stemming forward. Hero Marine with a huge supply. Big Gabe looking strong here. Great splits. Great. Oh, textbook. Oh, big Gabe. Yes, he loses most of those Marines, but that was a beautiful trade there. Yeah, Hero Marine losing 1,000... Well, well, killing 1,000 more minerals, 250 more gas. Trading Banelings for Marines? Well, that's gas for minerals. Not ideal, unless you can translate that into a winning fight. Otherwise, it's just a more expensive Zergling. Well, big Gabe... Hey, Rainer's about to finish 2-2, so since Hero Marine doesn't have that uh, anywhere really close, he may have to slow this down uh, or risk losing one of those critical fights. Yes, plus two, plus two, done. Rainer not going to give it up so easily. There was a risk of Hero Marine breaking through for a few moments there. He's pushed the creep all the way back to the hatcheries, but... Rainer still has 87 drones. He still has four, five hatcheries. No macro hatches, actually. Does he have an infestation pit? He does not. Which is the next glaring timing. As Hero Marine gets his fourth command center up and established. Planetary pretty much done. As he finishes 2-2, the advantage is going to tilt right back in his favor. Unburrows the mun. No, no marauders with this army to tank. If he just might, just don't get hit is the, is the solution for many Terrans. Um, now, a bit of a precarious position for those. Oh my god. Well, big Gabe making some big mistakes on those medevacs. This is the first time the Hydras are revealed. Uh, well, he gets some dam- Oof, eight drones with Widowmons. So, some counter damage. But, uh, he bit off a lot more than he could viably chew with, with that medevac drop from the center. The Hydras kick in. Do they have their speed? Yes. Wait, they do have additional speed off creep. 
Same speed on creep as they did before the patch here. But that allows the Hydras to close the distance and potentially hunt down Medivacs a little easier. Widowmind's getting drawn into the Terran army. And Raynor is threatening to just win the game right here. Hero Marine standing his ground with the Marine. Hydra is still adding a lot of DPS on the back line, but the Bio army is able to regroup and consolidate to the south. More Banelings trickling through. Hero Marine dipping underneath in supply. The, the medevac count is precious low, and most of them aren't where the reinforcements are. And just like that, no, it's happening again. Raynor just turns it around. Oh, his macro is so good. You've got to keep the pressure on him, but if you go too hard, he's going to slip through. Ah, uh, Hero Mar that hurts. He, he said, once again, he set up quite a house of cards. But they all come tumbling down. Game two. Ah. As a Terran, that does really hurt. Every Terran. I'm one third Terran myself. Some of my best friends are Terran, okay? Uh, but. It just feels, you can put all this work and all this effort, but then you, you mess up one fight. And you're just never going to recover. Of course, a Zerg, it feels the same way. Because you have to rebuild everything from scratch and then morph uh, larva and all that. You know what? Believe it or not, StarCraft II is quite difficult. That's the summary. So, um, I, I'm willing to commit to that statement. Believe it or not, quote me. StarCraft II is hard. Okay. Rude War players come sauntering in here. Uh, get out of the chiropractor's office. Take a, their, do a little one of these, stepping out of their 2004 Honda Civic. Like, ugh. Take their seatbelt off. Get out of the car. Say, what did you say to me, young man? I'll let you know I was playing Brood War when you were in elementary school. And to that I say, well, okay, Grandpa. If you played Brood War, I bet you make, like, when you get up off the couch or out of the gamer chair, or you get up to get some pizza rolls in between games of this cast, you make a little noise, like, ah, like, uh, you've been sitting there too long. Yeah, well, what does that have to do with anything here? Well, I'll have you know that Raynor was exactly negative two years old when Brood War came out, so if you don't feel old yet... Not even a glimmer. <laughs> Command center. Yes, that's what that thing is called. You can tell by the way it is. Isn't that neat? Meanwhile, Ray, uh, Reiner. Reiner? No, I meant Reaper. But then I was thinking of Rainer, and we ended on, well, three. Ah. Words. What do they mean? That's the question. Two command centers for Hero Marine. All right, going three CC yet again. And yet again, I think the issue was less with the build. Hero Marine, probably the best player to copy in terms of builds. Partially because his builds are forged on the ladder. He plays hundreds of games, all best of ones against some of the best players, and still has a ridiculous win rate despite his varied complaints. But uh, so even when players are stream sniping or cheating, he still finds a lot of success because it's relatively simple. Like, he, he's not, he's not Beyun. We saw what happened when he tried to do a Beyun move of just microing his medevacs all over the map. Did not go great. Did... Rainer killed the chicken! Is Rain? that's foul play. No, I, why does everybody kill the chicken? I don't, is it accidental? I've seen it in almost every game on this map. Maybe queens hate chickens because they remind them of how they can't fly. It's a space chicken, so like, maybe that's it. I don't know the lore. You see, there's one. It, well, it's a urubu, but it's a space chicken. You can tell. I 
What am I hearing? Oh my god. He's taking down. That's a rock tower. I've never. What? That's the hitbox? Okay. I've. I haven't seen anyone do this yet. There's a rock. It'll drop the destructible rocks, I assume, here. It does look kind of weird that the Zerglings are hitting that, but that will make it a little harder for the Hellions to run down there. Honestly, does that help? Uh, in, in this moment, yes. I, I think that that does help against the Hellions. Cloak Manchi at the back. How many kills did the, the Viking got? One. Almost certainly Overlord kill. Blue Flame Hellions. Wait, what? Hell she's He's going Hellion Banshee? This is like a Wings of Liberty bill. Is he gonna continue making? He's gonna get hyper flight? Hyper flight is on is on sale. It's cheaper now. Um Hyper Hellshees would be interesting. Well, we'll see when, when Rainer figures this out. Because at this point, that's that's the thing about Terran. You don't know until you see one of the upgrades, really, or the production, that they're going mech. Because seeing two Banshees and ten Hellions still could easily be a bio build. Cyclone to follow it up. Now, is that just kind of your placeholder? Cyclones with their... I, I don't know if he's going to get Magfield. We'll see. Just having one Cyclone doesn't hurt too much. It is Hellshees. Oh, my. Hero Marine. And Blue Flame Hellions just kind of get in. That's just so many Blue Flame Hellions. Where are the Zerglings? Well, they're not going to do much against this many Blue Flame Hellions. No, that's not someone coming to sell you some new dish soap. That's Blue Flame Hellions. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that joke, but I... Well, 16 drones. Dead. Roasted. Magfield Accelerator and Hyper Flight Banshees behind. Two units that can easily follow up that attack quickly. Rainer has a dozen queens and one zergling. Just finished a few more. Oh, man, she gets a little close. He's not even building. I don't know if this is hubris or just his counter. Because he saw blue flame hellions. And he has not built a roach warren. Okay, well, maybe he just noticed. I don't... Uh, he has not built a roach warren. Hydral is done. Spire. He's adding on the roach warren now, but... Hero Marine is already following it up. Setting up the wall... And I think this is the ideal scenario to go for this mobile mech. He's already hamstrung Rainer and, uh, by killing that many drones relatively early. And he knows that, that he's stuck kind of on the Zergling Queen. So there's very little threat to Hero Marine on the other side while he establishes the rest of his production. Hyper Flight about to complete. How many Banshees are out there? There are three. Um... Yeah, continued. Look, you can tell they're fast because they have the fancy jet engine things. Strap those to the mutas or something. <laughs> pre close. We'll see how much of that matters when he immediately reveals the Banshees, but... Uh, Magfield is done. Contrary to popular belief, queens are not armored. So the Cyclone Magfield change to plus 10 in general versus instead of 20 versus armored... Make Cyclones significantly better against Queens. And what unit does every Zerg player have in essentially every game? Might be like drones. To which I say, stop avoiding the question. Plus one, plus one, about to complete plating. He's focusing on vehicle weapons as opposed to ship weapons. So overall... I don't think the Cyclones are necessarily, like, the game-changing choice here, but they, they complement this hyper-mobile composition a lot more than, like, Siege Tank. No, not Overlord. Sh 
Swarm House are the choice. Well, actually, the new Cyclones are better against Locusts, though worse at sniping the Swarm House. Thing is, Hyper Shees are usually the counter to Swarm House, as obviously Locusts can't shoot up. Swarm House can't either. Uh, usually, you build Banshees as a counter to the Swarm House, but there's already Banshees. While Valrainer's building. Oh my god, that's so many units. On both sides. Is there enough to actually deal with this from Rainer? I don't think he has the ground army he needs. Meanwhile, the Hyper Shees are catching this lack of anti air army. It is Hero Marine who, with these incredibly mobile mech units, is able to catch Rainer out of position. Rainer is maxed out, but Stormhouse are some of the least supply efficient units in the game. Especially when they're on cooldown, in which case they're just a waste. Well, what are the upgrades? 1-1 one, one versus 1-1. One, one. Oh, here comes some Banelang. Hero Marine microing away. Where are the Banshees? Still not using the Locust. Rainer trying to get as close as possible. Using the Banelings as kind of a, a meat shield there. But here comes... Oh, he's bringing the Queens as well for anti-air. The Queens are all the anti-air there is. I guess maybe a few Ravagers, but... Now well, here we go. Swarm hose kind of hanging out. We got high sec auto tracking already on the way. Getting those NG Bay upgrades. If any cyclones get involved, the Banshees might be able to run over the Queens. There's a Widow Mine. Oh, ho, ho, gets a nice shot though. Right before going down from the grave. More cyclones being added in. Not bad against those Banes. I believe they two-shot instead of three-shot mains now. Not that they were they were terrible against Banes before. Queens getting cut to pieces. If the Queens are gone, the Banshees just fly in. Like, there is no counter. There's no anti-air. Like, you can see them, but what are you going to do? There's a Spore Crawler getting pushed around here that was supposed to help. I... Good luck with that. Are the Banshees are just hunting the Swarm Hose now. Uh, well, this is... The, Raynor is maxed out with nowhere to go. He keeps building Swarm Hose, but they're just gonna die to the Banshees. Like... I'm not entirely sure. Rainer, I don't know if Rainer's entirely sure either. Corruptors are on the way, which are a direct counter. But the Cyclones provide anti-air cover. I feel like Rainer is just kind of grasping at straws right now. And he doesn't even have the only straw-based Zerg unit, which is the Viper. Which might be a more direct counter with Parasitic Bomb. Does he even have a Hive? No. At this point, Hero Marine... Yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we've been fighting over this location. Hero Marine has five orbitals, two planetaries. He's building another command center. Has one just kind of chilling over here. Hero Marine is a long way from being in trouble, whereas Rainer's one bad fight. There's eight factories behind this, but still just the one star point. Not quite hell chads yet, but... 2-2 two, two done. The hell that's tanked a lot of the damage. But the swarm hosts are on cooldown. It's almost checkmate, I feel. Yeah. Uh, Rainer's doing a whole lot of not losing. Until Hero Marini flew into multiple corrosive vials and lost several cyclones and banshees. One job! And that job is to not shoot your own cyclones. But the second job is not fly into corrosive vials. He's down to two Banshees now. One. This battle has gone on for three and a half minutes. It's not over yet. I think it's about to end. Hero Marine still 12.9k minerals and 3300 gas to 7832. And the damage dealt 73% of all the damage to Big Game. I guess it will continue. Jesus. So the battle counts pretty much as whenever units are fighting 
with without like a 15 second gap which is actually a super cool thing we have but so this has been a back and forth battle though mostly fourth for for big gabe here more hell clones on the way out he's kind of just replaced all of the banshees he's trying to invalidate the corruptors by just going straight up ground Raynor didn't build that many Corruptors, um, but he has to have some anti-air just in case Banshees come back. Meanwhile, Hero Marine has 11 factories! Which, you know, that, that seems excessive until you realize his income is at like 34. He has an 1800 income lead. Yeah, he can afford it. Barely, but... Attack of the Clones. He's building a Raven, which, I mean, why not? Throwing it in there. Seven Cyclones at a time. He has 95 SCVs. Finally, we get our, our Cyclone game. And, well... Our, our truly Cy... It started with the 16 kills on the Blue Flame Hellions, but Blue Flame Hellions have always been great at killing drones. Rainer almost doubling the mineral losses despite the swarm house. There are now 23 cyclones on the map. Hero Marine builds a siege tank, probably admitting, you know what? He's at 3 3 now. Is there a hive? Still no hive. I mean, it's a cool battle. But. Is it. No, no, Winter, you're casting. Pretend it's close. And it looks like Hero Marine going to be sniping off this hatchery to the north side. Rainer scrambles to defend, holding on by the skin of his very sharp Zerg teeth right now. A few more Zerglings trickling out. Gets the surround on some of the Cyclones. Big win for Rainer. Now he does lose his hatchery, and he's still down 20 supply, but huge win killing those Cyclones. Finally, an emotional victory in a sea of defeats. Hero Marine... is able to scratch out a win despite winning for like 10 minutes. I don't think Raynor had any answer. This has been Raynor's significant weakness for pretty much since he, he became like a top tier pro player. I've seen not a small amount of games where Raynor just kind of flails in every direction against Mac. If he gets a lead early, I think he can carry it through, but I think that's his Achilles heel right there. We'll see. Can can Big Gabe recreate that experience? I, I do. I feel like Rainer's very uh, multitasking speed style kind of it goes against the grain when dealing with a mech player because no amount of Zergling micro is going to solve the plus three Hellbat problem or entrenched siege tank stuff like that. Or Banshees in general. That was very interesting. I think in that scenario, especially when your opponent is mostly relying on Queens, I think the Cyclones as a complement to the Banshees are better now. They are nerfed overall as a specific, like a hatchery sniping or like even an anti-cheese. But as a, a more generalized unit composition... I think with their bonus against Queens, um, uh, technically they kill Banelings faster as well. So, I, eh, make make Goli make StarCraft Two Brood War again. Remove the Cyclone. Give us Goliaths with the range upgrade against Air. So, also fun fact. Depending on who you are, I guess it's fun. Another change was that Cyclones will now prioritize a lock-on against air units that can hit them. So against, like, Void Rays. If the, for example, if there's a Zealot and a Void Ray both in the same general area in front of you, they will hit the Void Ray, even if the Zealot is slightly closer. Unless you manually lock on. So essentially the functionality of Cyclones as a relatively mobile uh, air defense 
is buffed somewhat, even before the upgrade. Because before, what was the issue a lot of the time was like, there'd be a zealot in front and you're getting proxy void raid. And since nobody, not even pro players, ever turn off the auto lock, like you can turn it, it's like turning off the charge. Okay, nobody does it. Technically, you can turn off auto cast, but I feel like it, it should be like smashing the like button. It should just always be on auto cast, okay? Uh, don't even think twice about it. You don't want to micro it, you just do it right off the bat, you're good to go. Really, the players do need to turn off the lock more, I think. Like, in the first few Cyclones. It, it, every time I see a Cyclone, like, lock onto the probe or a Zergling, I, I say, I know what happened here. <laughs> All right, three CZ yet again. Neither opting for any early game shenanigans or waiting till mid game. All right, once they've all grown up, got some experience, and then we get spicy. I don't think your Marine can rely on killing 16 drones and a ton of Zerglings with Blue Flame Hellions. Uh, though I do think it was uh, it was great. Rainer has a tendency to hold off the secondary tech. A lot of Zergs, like Ragnarok, for example, will just get a Roach one, even if they don't mean to use it. Which is probably a bit costly, but when it does pay off, it does make Terrans look silly, which is usually worth it. Overlord wandering in. We'll see... Uh, pretty much exactly the same thing there has been to see in most of the games thus far. What? Ah, oh, what a tease. Though that might have telegraphed. I, I'm not going to read too much into it. Hero Marine started Hyperflight, canceled, and went cloak. I'm pretty sure it was a misclick, but that doesn't mean Hyperflight is off the table, especially with a second factory on the way. Now, the Zergling gets in, but didn't SCV kill it? No, wait, no. Yes? One of these SCVs murdered that Link. Which one? I'm looking for it, because the Marine doesn't have a kill, so... Which one of you is the killer? Show me your fusion cutter. Alright, uh, you're getting a promotion. You get to build all the turrets. Apparently, Hero Marine complains on stream that the patch changed his hotkey from cloak to hyperflight. Oh, I, does he use, if he uses grid keys, so what happened is Corvid Reactor was removed. So that means the buttons on the Tech Lab starport are rearranged. So either that just changes things for grid or just in general, but it definitely, um, that would explain 0.4 seconds of teasing. But don't worry, he's not going to tease us for too long. As Hyperflight is on the way. Two Banshees out. And, okay, Raynar gets another crack at it. This time, without taking critical damage to Blue Flame Hellions. With the knowledge, or at least the experience gained in the last game, does he do anything differently? That's the question. Roach one on the way. Free Cloak Banshees making their way in. In the... Oh my god. Brenda, why is there no creep? One tumor! You have energy for 12 of them! My, Zerg players not... Name a more iconic combo than pro Zerg players and not spreading creep between their main and their natural. When, when those Banshees kill an extra seven drones because the queens have to tiptoe over the ramp, 
You're going to be un unhappy. All right, believe me. Meanwhile, dozens of creep tumors on the map doesn't bat an eye. How many Hellions is this? 16 blue flame Hellions! I... Rainer. Rainer. What, what's going on? My Italian friend. Well, he didn't kill as many drones, and he didn't do it as early. But... Also, the Hellions are still alive. Like... This is just... There's just no answer to these right now. Uh, well, the queens are handling it, but... It, Rainer's just looking like he has nothing here. Right, here Marine's like, what do you have? And here Rainer's just... Queens? <laughs> you can't just answer queens to everything. And why not? Like, <laughs> I've been doing it for six years. Nine queens and counting. But this time we got an infestation bit of very important the spire. The banshees were clearly, while they didn't do the majority of the damage, I don't think, the banshees were what really broke open the defenses. They deny... The swarm host, they force the queens into awkward scenarios, which are essentially anywhere past the halfway point of the map. You need the spire to at least threaten, and then maybe later on broodlords as an answer as well. Broodlords are a little more maneuverable, um, but broodlings don't last long. I don't know if the new faster broodlords are better or not, but how many banshees is this? Oh my, eight, the octo she's and, uh, nice spore crawler, I would say, if you still had one. Oh, my. Oh, the quick red guy! Get the fucking drones out of the way! I don't... Well, this would have been a nice little wall-off against Hellions, but apparently it's a pretty nice wall-off against Queens. Oh, Banelings. Oh, this is the saddest thing I've ever seen. Okay. He settles. That that's what settling looks like right there. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> uh meanwhile, Hero Marine has not just a fourth, he's going for a fifth, and he has a sixth and a seventh command center. Count a lot, and then I'm sure after that, command centers eight and nine, and then yes, ten. And that's how I, count along with me, Terrence. Meanwhile, Rainer is just trying to put together an R. Oh my god. Well, that's... There's no... There's eight Banshees. Eight Corruptors. If he doesn't fly in... Remember, the only reason that that Rainer lived that much longer in the last game was that Hero Marine lost half his Banshees to Corrosive Bow for no reason. Now, the Ravager... The Ravager Ling Corruptor able to push back for now. But here we are again. We've skipped the swarm host phase and gone straight for Ravager Ling Bane. Hero Marine not maxed out here. The thing is, Hyper She's are faster than Corruptors. So, Raynor cannot catch him. He can only deflect. There is no way to catch those without Mutus. Um, so, good luck. Like, it's not, it's not like they're way slower, but they just can't chase them down without cornering them. Yeah, Cyclone, a whole bunch of Banelings here, rolling their way up. The Cyclones doing as Cyclones do. The Banshees, I think that was a bit of a select all army action there from Big Gabe, as they flew directly towards the army through the Corruptors. The Banelings still rolling. This is why we usually have a few siege tanks to buffer. <laughs> yeah, a bit awkward here, but he does fly through the cyclones. These, this fight kind of spanning over the whole map so far. That is the cool part of this unit composition, is the fights end up being like uh, a, a full map chase from either side. As it's in the cyclones and the banshees' best interest to just kind of micro away from the opposing army, so... 
Yeah, Hero Marine agrees that Siege Tanks are a pretty good unit. Rainer agrees that Hive Tech is pretty good as well. So, oh my. Well, the income... It looks like the this is the Mule Hills here. The Siege Tanks kind of pop out. The Rally Boy, clearly not amazing at this stage. How many Banshees left? They're heading around the north side. <laughs> the Mule Quake continues to resonate throughout the map. Well, actually, Rainer just obliterated all of them with some Banelings. So that'll slow that down a bit. And we're back. But now, the, wow, we built five tanks, not ten tanks. And that's about nine tanks too many for this army to deal with. 24 SCVs down. Hero Marine plummets to 78. Which is still arguably too many. He's reflexively rebuilding. He saw, saw SCVs die, so he queued up more. It's a reflex. The Corruptors... Ah, here's the awkward part. Is now, it's Hero Marine in the awkward situation of having no anti-air. So the Corruptors are able to just melt the buildings with Caustic Spray. <laughs> well, here comes Reiner to the north side. Good supply lead here. Hero Marine may have uh, seesawed his unit composition a bit too much in either direction. As without coverage, the siege tanks are isolated and killed. The command center's forced to lift. The corruptor's coming back around. A few turrets being added on. But now Raynor's got Hero Marine on the ropes. Well, he's, well, he's dropping changelings to try to draw friendly fire onto the tanks, which is definitely one of the strategies. Rainer actually taking an efficient fight over the last couple minutes. Killing 1,300 more gas is the highlight. As Big Gabe is struggling to put enough supply on the field. Mixing in more Cyclones. He's got 8 tanks, 11 Cyclones. A healthier mix. A balanced mech diet here. From the man named after the most non-mech unit Terrans have. Greater Spire now on the way. Maybe a bit on the later side for all this, but uh, it looks like we will actually see the Broodlords. More even here. Oh, he gets a lock, but drags him in anti-armor missile. He breaks the Cyclones with that anti-armor. I mean, everything's already likely to die very quickly. Cyclone lock-on is technically a spell kit. Oh my god. Oh my, the Banelings locked in. Well, this is awkward. Not ideal here for Rainer, as he's forced to just get rid of all those, and the siege tanks have established themselves in quite a disgusting position up there. Plus three, plus three just now starting, as Hero Marine has felt a lot of pressure. Greater Spire's done. Does he have any Broodlords? Uh, nine Corruptors somewhere. Rainer, I'm sure he'll be freeing up some supply soon. At this current rate. Yeah, three, three, finishing up. Rainer has whittled down Hero Marine's economy a bit, but now he's reestablished those bases. He's got at least two comfortably mining. Blinding Cloud temporarily disables the tanks, but temporary indeed. As the Cyclones close back in, Rainer has money in the bank. How's he gonna spend it? He gets maybe one more max out before we have this late game fight. Nine Broodlords on the way. Speedier Broods. But are they speedy enough? to stop this. I'm very interested, because the, the, the siege tanks can work against the cyclone. Oh, the rocks! There's a rocks! Wait, it doesn't block the whole thing, but... I'm sorry, I didn't even realize there was a rock tower there. You guys didn't either. Don't pretend. That was completely... I don't know if anyone did. I think that was all just splash damage. Meanwhile, the broods have arrived, and the broodlings, they might not last as long, but the cyclones and the siege tanks have to get out of there. The broods are going to chase him down, force him away, but 14 drones getting roasted as Big Gabe. Oh, drone flambe. I don't know what that word means, but it sounds like flame, so I think that's accurate. I'm cultured. I don't... Meanwhile, the planetary trying to hold against the broods. I... So, like, the broods don't have any attack upgrades, so 
And the broodlings aren't doing amazing themselves. So the brood throwdown attack is is air upgrades. Oh, is there any other anti-air? Um, no. Oh, well. How many times have we seen this story? This is very Wings of Liberty. It's like, oh, I forgot to have any corruptors. It's just going to lose everything. Every brood lord. At least most of them until the queens can come up to save the day. The hatchery dies. Here we're going to lose the cyclones. Ooh. Well, overall, where are we now? Uh, Hero Marine. <laughs> the income starting to tilt in his direction, and Rainer's unit composition is good, not great. It's going to come down to one or two fights now, as the Brood Lords are still intact, but Thors have joined the army. And Hero Marine has 3-3. Three, three. Maximum armor and weapon upgrades. Well, parasitic bomb on the Vikings, but relatively easy split there. And there's actually no other anti-air. The Queens. What's your answer, Raynor? You can't just say Queens again. I didn't. I didn't. You, you can't. You gotta, you gotta build something. Oh, here we go. Vikings to the right in the center of the fight here. Gonna take out the Broods. The Ravagers more than enough to deal with the Thors on their own, but once the Broods are dealt with, then the Siege Tanks have, have nothing left to really distract them. So while the Ravagers might be winning the ground battle, the Vikings have won the air war. And the Cyclones are coming up. No base has died yet. This is, it's just very hard, especially without Infestors, to lock down those clones. The Corrosive Bow is getting a surprising amount of damage in this fight. Probably too much. More Cyclones. Corrosive Bile knocks out the tank. Banelings to buffer. In fact, kills another clone. Hero Marine, though, chasing across the map. The income and the production. Oh, but he loses sight. He loses. The Corrosive Biles are hitting too much. It's too much. The thing is the drone count during all this. 68 drones. Oh, my. 68 drones. And then there's also other things to consider. Okay. So Hero Marine's income is 2k. Never mind. <laughs> Rainer got an income lead. <laughs> yeah, buddy, you should mention that. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Feels like the win probability is is described by this graph right now. Oh my gosh. Meanwhile, your Marine almost killed a base. The Ravagers scrambling to intercept, but the tank's still adding some damage. Down goes a Viper, no spells cast. Throws an abduct. Ah, uh, Marine eventually grinds him down. I think Raynor fought back hard there, but I'm still not convinced of the, 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 the Blue Flame Hellions keep getting damage. They just keep doing damage. Honestly, now this is going to sound like, like I'm angry coaching the one of the top zergs in the world, but lur lurkers? Like, I know, lurkers are not good against siege tanks and thors, but lurkers until you can, like, to, to lock out the cyclones at the very least. <laughs> I put your balance complaints and also criticisms in the comments. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out this as well. Good chance of another TVC to look at, but I love Hero Marine style. I don't think, uh, unlike some things, it doesn't, it feels like it's uniquely suited to beating Rainer, but I hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Are we still doing that? The bell's still there, right? Yeah. Uh, um, Right, good luck, have fun. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Stay chill.